My dad was like, I'll disown you. Wow, yeah. okay. I, I told him, that was the day I was going to London, on this, the same day, I was like 19. I told him, listen, it's my life, it's my money, and I decide. And I banged the door and I left, you know? We had a 16 year long war, me and my dad fighting for 16 years. Hey everyone, welcome to the third episode of the Booking Experience. Before we start, we want to inform you about super exciting news. Book Inc. is launching in France in July and we wanted to thank you all for believing in the platform and for helping us grow globally. Without you, Booking wouldn't be here today. We're super, super grateful for the amazing community that we have built over the past year and we hope to keep growing and to actually expand worldwide. So today, we're meeting with one of the key pillars of the tattoo industry in Lebanon. An artist who's known not just for his top tattooing skills, but for his huge talent in so many art areas, such as graffiti, sculpting, and many more. If you haven't guessed yet, I'm talking about Haji Baidun. Hi, Haji. Hi, Tracy. How are you? I'm great. Good? Yes. So, first of all, thank you so much for having me here today. You have a one-of-a-kind studio. No way. Thank you. Uh, I wish people can see everything. Back here later, we uh, we get here in a studio tour, mm -hmm. and Ajad, it's amazing. So, Hadi, uh, I think you know that you are like on top of your game in the tattoo industry from the beginning. Like you started tattooing in Lebanon. It all started with you, basically. So, as many people might be curious as I am, we want to know. How did you start? When did you start? Why did you start? Oh, wow. I started uh, initially as um, I wanted to do something that is rebellious and that society doesn't approve of. Okay. Because all my life, I've liked being someone who goes against the current, you know, like mm. even from school days. I always wanted to be different. Okay. So um, when I got in introduced to tattooing through a magazine, I was like, this is it, you know, and this was in 91. Wow. So a friend of mine uh, went to Cyprus, got a tattoo magazine. The war had just ended and all that. So in, the, in that period, I was painting on T-shirts. And the reason why he came over with the tattoo magazine was that he picked a design from the magazine and asked me to paint it on his T-shirt. Okay. In the meantime, as I was painting it, I was looking at the art, the magazine, the colors, the tattoos, you know. And I was like wondering, how the hell is it possible to do all this? you know, colors and shades and lines under the skin. I mean, I had no idea how it went. I was 17 back then. I was 17, I was super 17. young. Yeah. Okay. And then I read the whole magazine and I was really, really hooked. Mm. I knew that this is it, you know? Mm. So um, that was in summer, <coughs> October, I go to AB. I'm doing archeology span because it was the only thing I could do. <laughs> <you Okay. know? laughs> Mm. And I spent the whole time at, at the library reading and researching tattoo. Anything related to tattoo, I was reading it and, you know, knowing mm. what it, what it mm. was. History, mythology, uh, why did it develop, where is it found in archaeology, psychology of artists. Mm. I have read so many books, so I had an idea. Okay. And then step two was to find a tattoo machine. Don't forget, 90s, mm. 91. And there's like... Not even a cell phone was invented, you know? There was no cell phone mm. back then. There was no internet, there was nothing. You had your regular line, which hardly even connects, you know? <laughs> anyway, my uncle came back from the States and he get, got me an address. So I wrote them a letter, like, I need a catalog. So like five, six months later, I get a reply because post service was so slow. Exactly. And the reply was, you have to pay $20 for the catalog, so okay. I make a little check and I send it. Six, seven months later, I get a reply. I get the catalog. Okay, what to order? Mm. Like, machine parts for me is like Chinese, you know? <laughs> I had yeah. no idea it's what to order. New. Yeah. And then I was kind of uh, like disappointed a little bit that I don't know what to order, mm. you know? And it's very hard to call them and for communicate. For them to have. Yeah. 
So, and then I was like, fuck, if the machine... D- <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Free space. <laughs> if the machine doesn't come to you, you go to the machine. So there's an address in London. Fair enough. <clears throat> I make a little um, questionnaire, you know, like a small piece of paper. My dad had a typewriter, so I typed on it. If you feel like getting it, that will leave your name and number. And I left it at a, a music shop, mm. a friend of mine, and a bookstore, you know, art materials and stuff. And like two or diff- three different places. Okay. And every week I would pass by and look at the papers, see how many have filled up. And man, there was a lot, wow. so many. I was like, okay, that's it. So I saved up. In 94, like three years later, I had enough money. I go to London. I stay 10 days. Got everything, machines, accessories, you know. I even got a book that teaches you how to solder needles one by one and what color before what color when you're tattooing and, you know, basic rules and stuff. And that's how I had my first kind of training, you know. And experience. And then, you have to do it physically, mm. so where better to do it than on myself, you know? Okay. So, so I did the first on one on myself. And then I showed it at AUB, you know, my friends and friends mm. of friends. And wow, it's so It was cool. new here, no? It was not a lot of comments. Yeah, yeah. Tattoos. There were, like, of course, uh, the tattoos of the 80s, mm. all it about, you know, the mm. There was, it was there, but it wasn't the quality tattoo, mm. you know? Mm. It, you could tell it's, like, mm. handmade and blurry mm. and you know not not anatomically correct mm. you know there was no technique mm. there was nothing so i came with the machine you know and mm. super professional plus i had a background of painting okay you know so i've okay. been painting since i was 14 on t-shirts mm. and coloring mm. and you know lines and all that so i had an idea plus i'm good with my hands so it wasn't so hard for me actually okay and then it was word of mouth, you know, one person, you mm. know, tells the other and then mm. it started, you know, like since 95. Wow, Andre, that's yeah. amazing. <coughs> the, how did the people react uh, to that uh, career choice? You know, back then tattoos were a huge taboo. Oh yeah, of course. Like, so, you know, how did people react about that? Starting with family, my dad. Your dad. My dad was like, he was a university professor. And he's so academic and mm. he's so like square. By the book. Yeah, <laughs> too much. You mm. know, like I, if I tell you the rules we had at home, you'd freak. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mm. uh, my dad was like, I'll disown you. Wow, yeah. okay. I, I told him, that was the day I was going to London on this, the same day. I was like 19. I told him, listen, it's my life, it's my money, and I decide. And I banged the door and I left, you know. We had a 16-year-long war. Me and my dad fighting for 16 years. Wow. Because I defied him, you know? Yeah. Society was split in like two different uh, categories. You had, of course, the people who, who, who were afraid and people who are kind of religious, you know? Mm. And they were like, no, it's haram, it's not buga, Most all this. And then you had the people who appreciated, you know? Mm. And these were my people, mm. you know? Um, there was a lot of questions, of course, like regarding the society of who is getting tattooed and lots of questions mm. and lots of debates and mm. all that. It was on TV, it was in the news, it was, you know, was and ignorance brings a lot of problems. When people are ignorant of something they don't know, they're going to hate it and they're going to, you know, downsize it or you know, demonize it, mm. you know. Mm. And I've been through that. But how to counter that, luckily, Luckily, the image I gave, it's because, you know, I can speak English and um, I'm educated. Unlike the people who were tattooing at, th- at that period, okay. who were they usually? Um, marginal people, you mm. know, my dad used to call them marginal <laughs> people, you know. You know hey, they had a specific category on it. <laughs> yeah, you know, that category <laughs> that we don't relate to. Yeah. And because they're different. Hey, and this gave it a bad image, you mm. know, to start mm. with, and especially with politics and war and all mm. that, and symbols and mm. signs on people. So it was really associated, mm. not only in Lebanon, but worldwide. worldwide. It was associated with marginal people, gangsters, mm. countercultures, you know, societies, mm. small groups of societies against the mainstream. Mm. Because, you know, religion forbade tattoos. So the only exactly. people who got tattoos back then were outlaws mm. outside the law, 
or royal families mm. above the law. Mm. These are the only people who could get tattoos. Okay. But the mid middle class people in the middle would not dare. Mm. You know, it yeah. was this kind of worldwide. You know, because it was a huge taboo. It was like if yeah, you yeah, do yeah. it, has your <coughs> immediately a super bad person yeah. exactly it means you're a gangster it, yes. it's still up till today in some parts of the world like in mm. japan or somewhere mm. in the states it's not really look it's mm. frowned upon you know they don't see it as mm. art because it's gang related and you had a similar view of it here mm. also but how to counter that i started making a newsletter mm. you know and distributing it at universities because it, there was no Instagram, there was no social media, so the only way to reach people was through print. Yes. And luckily, I'm a graphic designer. That's what I studied. At, you know, okay. I, I changed from archaeology. I to moved graphic to graphic design. design a year later. Mm. So I had computer skills. Plus, I can write. Plus, mm. I have artwork to show. Not only tattoos, but mm. in the beginning, it started as only mm. tattoos in the newsletter. And okay. I would print in it, you know, uh, articles that I would write about mm -hmm. hygiene, about quality of work, about what to look for in a tattoo studio, you know, it's kind of highlighting okay. the important things because people don't know. Yes. Plus, there was a section on history, <coughs> and this was part of my uh, final project at AUB, actually, history of tattoos, and then I came up with a style, you know, for back then, for the 90s, mm. which ironically sold a lot. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which was great you know i used it so it was like a cross between design and tattoo you know and i what i learned from mm. graphic design i applied in tattoo you know in terms of thinking in terms of uh, computer skills in terms of design it really helped a lot yeah, so it was a huge added value for yeah your of course and plus all the you know, seeing the newsletter and i had like uh, you know when i would give it at, at the gate students, uh, the janitor, uh, the professor, anyone passing by and interest is interested, I would hand him one. Mm. And then you have p uh, teachers in the class and they would go and say, look, this is a successful marketing in a marketing class, you know? Ah, okay, yeah. you, were, you became a reference. Yeah, it was, I got echoes, you know, yeah. it was something, you know, because wow. it's printed material. Yeah. And then because I have my client's database, I used to collect uh, physical addresses. So later on, when I started printing bigger quantities of my newsletter, like 10,000 copies or something, I would mail by with the bon post, with the post, five to 6,000 copies. You know, okay. it was affordable back then. And so you're a client, and then you receive a newsletter mm. with your name on it, and you know. Okay, full on And it was really yeah. interesting, people. And then uh, people who, to whom it was not intended to do would get to it. Uh, no, the, the delivery boy maybe mm. didn't go up on the sixth floor because, <laughs> you know, there's uh, no electricity. Yeah. So he stores it on the second floor. <laughs> and then the madame on the second floor, wow, well, she has yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And she's interested and she has a scar and she wants to cover it up. Okay. And this is a real example, you know, because okay. I printed pictures of scar cover-ups okay, okay. or old tattoo, mm. you know, cover-ups. Mm. Mm. So there was different sections mm. to show okay. what can be done. Okay, and thanks this to tattooing, exactly yeah. brought new people and that was really really cool but then when instagram happened and then the prices shut up and then you can't mail any more than mm. thousand copies or you're gonna pay a fortune <laughs> you know it was affordable before yes so i stopped it wow. but yeah it was it was something and this in this way gradually like in the 2000s this is when i started it the idea people viewing tattoos started to change mm. like locally mm. also globally it mm. was changing mm. pamela anderson got it, a barbed wire tattoo mm. and then everyone wants, wanted mm. to get the same and then um it become uh, it became a trend yeah yeah Imagine. just like now you know Sah, exactly it's still but you know before it was more like less less mass mm. like today mm. you know so th that's the thing that biwatak you had to face so many challenges to be able to, to be accepted, yes. you know, you know, you know yeah. or it's not something bad. It's and a lot of people never took it, took it seriously. Yeah. Until they saw that, oh my God, this guy has been mm. around for like mm. 20 years. Yeah. You know, it's legit. This is, this is the problem. I, I don't know where it In Lebanon, we have that problem. I feel, you know, art is not taken seriously in general. And you feel, you know, as a hada, he's an artist, you know, شو هال شغل, هذا مش شغل. You know, we had that مثل ذات ايديا انه محطوطه براسنا نحن وصغار انه اكزاكتلي ارت از نوت ارت از ا هوبي هيك هيك بنشوفها سو ذاتس واي انه اي بليف هاو هارد ات از اسبيشلي ذات از يو سيد 
You mentioned that you're, you're not just uh, into tattooing, as we can see. Mm. Uh, you're into a lot of different mm. uh, I've done areas. A lot. I've done a lot of live events where I paint during an event, you know, like a big mm. mural or body paint mm. uh, or paint on mm. uh, snowboards or, you know, a jet ski or whatever or a boat or any item. And okay. this was a big plus also, mm. you know, I did a lot of work in the advertising world since I'm a graphic mm. designer, so I never stopped that side, you okay. know, as logos, as uh, press, as, uh, you mm. know, printable materials for businesses and stuff. I, I managed, you know, mm. a bit from here, a bit from there, you know, you can't rely on only one thing, mm. especially in the 90s, like, there was no trend yet, you know, or the 2000s, and then, don't forget the political situation and, you know, the shit that happens and all that, everything affects everything, mm. you know? That's good, it's true. But yeah, there's always a way. Yeah, amazing uh, <laughs> career path, Saraha. Yeah. You know, I have a question uh, that I'm super, super curious about. Uh, and I always ask myself, you know, what inspires you as an artist to create art? You know, what comes to the mind of an artist? They, well, you know, I want to create this. I want to do this. You know, should be seen. It's more of a feeling, you know, like you want to do something, okay. but you want to do something meaningful. You know, you can you can go to the movies, but then, or you can buy something, but it's not as satisfying as doing something. And you want to do something that, one, resembles you and is an expression of you, you know? I feel happy, I want to, uh, you know, mm. paint something happy. Mm. I feel angry, I want to do something. And I was filled with anger most of my life, you know? I had okay. lots of anger and rebellion. Anger towards everything. Mm. Life, people, the country, the crooked system, mm. you know? Uh, my, my parents, mm. all this. Plus, music for me is a, a huge inspiration, like okay. rock music and the rebellion of this music and the melodies and the aggression mm. in it and the lyrics and all that. It's what really, it was my therapy all my life, you know? Okay. And, and having all this mix in my mind, you know, makes me think that I want to be a rock star. And I wanted that since I was like a teenager. I wanted to be a rock star. But I'm not a musician, nor mm. am I a singer or anything. Mm. I do art, and okay. and and I do everything in that in that flavor, you know. Mm. Okay. So also art was I, like your escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my it's my identity. Mm. It's who I am. Mm. Without it, who am I? Mm. You know. Mm. It's beautiful. This is it, and mm. it it becomes you. It's your identity. It's your fingerprint. It's you know. You came to this earth. And you have the ability to take material mm. from the earth and shape it the way you want. You take a piece of wood, you take a piece of metal, you take uh, some paint, you take a cloth, whatever it is. And you do your magic and uh, you, you present it in a different way. So let's say you said an entire it's a feeling. It's usually when you feel something, you feel the need to create. Mm. And let's say you're angry, or maybe mm. that is sane, let's say and you feel the need to create, and you create mm. that art. So after that creation, you feel different, you feel better, you feel... Uh, yeah, yeah, you have an orgasm. <laughs> Definitely. And it's an orgasm every time, it's a mental orgasm. Every time you look at the art that you've done, mm. like, oh, fuck, I did this, you know? <laughs> you feel proud. And you, yeah, and you look at the details, and in every detail there's a story of what were you thinking or feeling at that moment when you did that. Mm. It's engraved in the art. Forever. Believe it or not, any time you look at it, even like 20 years later, you look at something you've done before, automatically you get mm. the vibe, you know? Mm. Because art is like this, we are uh, active, you know? So we are doing the a action. And the art is passive, it's receiving the action. Mm. The minute you finish the art, fin you finish doing it, the roles are reversed. Now the art is active, it's telling you something and you become passive, mm. the receiver. Mm. So the roles are switched. So all the energy you put in later on to you or to anyone else looking at it is going to receive that energy. True. If they are sensitive enough to that energy and it touches them, then they want to buy it, they want to mm. own it. Mm. If it resembles them mm. one way or the other, if they relate to it, if they relate okay. to the energy of it, to what it's saying, you know, although it could be an abstract piece, mm. but it could be saying something to okay. you. 
So the energy put in is the energy put out, you know? I love that. So yeah. it explains Lincoln, why is it subjective? And why they say that someone loves that piece, loves that piece, and someone else doesn't love it. So it exactly. makes sense, you know, exactly. it's related to the feeling that you get when you look at that uh, mm. piece. And usually it's energy, it's energetically, mm. if it's harmonious with you or not, it could repel you or it could mm. attract you, you know? Yeah, it could it makes so much trigger sense. something in you. Mm. You know, and hey, sometimes I'm past, you know, like for, for literally a lot of time, yeah. you, know, like you get immersed in it, and sometimes, okay, both. Exactly. Add it. Exactly. Nice. So this is art, you know, and art on the skin is the same as art on the mm. canvas, you know? Yes. It's the same. Plus, when it's on the skin, it's, uh, it's you are not uh, alone doing it. You are doing it on someone, and you are interacting mm. with that someone, and there's a lot of limitations to what you can do size-wise or style-wise mm. or idea-wise or whatever but it's a beautiful interaction at the end of the day it's mutual therapy yeah you know tattooing is mutual therapy as much as the person getting tattooed is having their mm. therapy you as a tattoo artist you are also having your own therapy because you are creating with them yeah, yeah. because you are creating and interacting mm. you know and sometimes answers come to you through different people or you are the answer to some people, mm. you know? Mm. So it's mutual exchange of energy and what remains is the memory of this energy, you know? Mm. On your body forever. Yeah. What uh, do um, maybe most people not realize about life as an artist? You can be sure for another year, he's an artist, he's so creative, wow, he's so creative. Uh, I wish I can be like that. But in Aki, there is a side or something that people don't see or don't realize. Look, it's much easier than you imagine. And also the price is too high. Mm. But you are, you, for anything in life, if you're willing to pay the price, you, you can get it. Mm. Anything you want, you can have if you're willing to pay the price for it. Not materially, mm. although also maybe also materially, but I'm speaking emotionally and energy-wise and focus-wise, you know. Anyone who has a dream to become an artist can be, because everyone is an artist. All it takes is some courage to start, you know, and then it's like a snowball effect. You have to start with something and then it will grow bit by bit, you know, it will feed itself. If you're a writer, if you're into fashion, if you're into drawing, singing, dancing, whatever mm -hmm. it is that you like to do as art, if you put all your focus in it, there's no way it's not going to happen. Mm. There is no way. But you have to put your 100% focus into it. If you have doubt, maybe it won't work, then it might not work. And <laughs> unfortunately, know? most of the people, they think that way. And I know how they... No, it's in the culture, you it know. Must Parents teach their children how to be afraid. Exactly. They, they, it's like... Uh, it's like and to doubt know? themselves. Yeah. It's so prevalent, mm. in, especially here. But you have to defy that and you have to like turn your deaf ear to that because your parents don't know as much as you know, mm. you know, like I discovered when my parents passed away and all that, that at some point I evolved further than where my parents were. My parents stopped somewhere mm. and they couldn't open up okay. more. That's it. Mm. Because they didn't have the same experiences that I've had. Different life, True. totally different mindset, totally different. Everything was different. You know, now we are more advanced than our parents and our parents are, are, may not be the best guides for us. The best guides for us are, uh, is our, our internal, sense. yeah, your inner voice. Not the fears of society, of whatever, you know, people, people usually like to uh, propagate fear. They like it. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> A few moments later. <laughs> it was, <laughs> you know? to Lebanon. <laughs> eh, it's cool. Okay, so yeah, uh, people like to propagate fear because fear sells at the end of the day. Mm. And ever since uh, newspapers came around and radio and TV, it was bad news, you know. This is called unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Um, they have a name for it. It's called um, ideological <laughs> subversion. You okay. know, there's a name for it, and it's a huge twenty-year program to program people on fear mostly because you can control a person who's afraid you can never control a happy person mm. a courageous person doesn't need your help mm. only a person who's afraid needs your help 
therefore to make people afraid will give you power over them and this is, has been always the system you know in humanity and it goes down from macro from society into micro family mm. therefore you have parent dominating the kids or the elder kid dominating his younger brothers or sisters but this was more prevalent in the past like in the 70s and you sure. know before that up till like some of it in the 90s probably now i don't know if it's still there but maybe but a bit less a bit really. less but the common factor is always fear cells yeah. you know and fear is an illusion you know really mm. usually the things you are afraid of are the things that never happen mm. you it's just your thoughts it's your imagination so if you have fear in you paint it this is how you conquer it if you have anger in you put it out mm. this is how you conquer it you know you can put it out and make a fight or get drunk or sculpt something or paint something you know which is more positive anger of course you know doing art is the most positive form of anger you know mm. is the most positive manifestation of anger simply outpouring something whether it's visual or uh, vocal or playing an instrument mm. or you know doing something with your hands that's it mm. you become a creator and this alone gives you power alone people look at you differently because you're someone who creates mm. versus true. than someone who consumes you exactly. look at yourself differently mm. when you create if there's a period where you don't create you feel like shit you know <laughs> um well who, who am, am i, I? <laughs> exactly you know? and this reminds you of who you are mm. and each time the creation is different because you're in a different mood you're in a different mm. mental state you're in a different stage in your life where you you know observe things now in a different way than before you know so the outcome will look different and this is how it you know progresses i think people will get super inspired by that this is the point you know? i want to be an artist now <laughs> you have to be i mean you are an artist <laughs> but you you are taught in school to forget that you're mm. an artist and they did the study it's so cool so they got a bunch of kids and they gave them an exercise like uh, how many uses can we do from a, a paper clip i saw this in a ted talk which is really interesting so uh the it's called divergent thinking you okay. know like how many solutions can you find mm. in your mind to the same problem mm. so wh how many uses can you make of a paper clip well some kids wanted to make it a huge sculpture other kids wanted to make it a hook to mm. uh, find fish or you could uh, uh, i don't know twist it in uh, some way and make it uh, a table or a chair there are so many but the percentage of the people who got a's or who scored at 10 over 10 were 100 percent of the kids at age three mm. they did the same test for the same kids at age five and then seven and ten and fifteen and the percentage of the kids getting uh, a 10 over 10 number shrunk with age so the older they got the less creative they mm. got and this is what because happens of the system. in the system yeah they they make you forget that you're an mm. artist and they make you focus on Logic. you know uh, you know like th because uh, the what is school school is built around a factory so the, the center is the factory so what do you need to make a factory you need an architect, you need an engineer, and then you need machines, so mm. you need a mechanical engineer, mm. and then you need someone to maintain them. You need workers, so for the workers, what do you need? You need food, so you need restaurants and uh, places to, to live, you know, shelter. Mm. And then you need to distract them because you're making them slave from eight till, till eight. In the beginning, it was like that, 12 That's hours. Good. So as a distraction, you create entertainment, a movie and a basketball and whatever, you know? And then it grew, and this is the city. And then the school is related to the factory in the sense that the primary uh, topics of education are architecture and physics and uh, exactly. engineering, engineering medicine. And exactly, yeah, you need a doctor to yeah. fix the, you know, the employees exactly. and the shrink and all that. So everything caters to the factory, and you are part of that. You know, where do you fit in that? You know, either you're gonna okay uh, produce the item or you're gonna market it or sell it so you have the advertising and the marketing and all that you know branch of selling the item of the factory you know mm. 
and then that's it. How did you get to that uh, conclusion? <laughs> it's, it's in crazy. plain sight. It's in front of us. <laughs> it's <you know>? scary. <laughs> yeah, this is it. So where do we want to be on, in this game? Mm. Do we want to be a, a cog in the in the big engine of the factory? You know, whether producing the item in a you know chain. Mm. Uh, chain factory thing or selling the item as in marketing mm. or do we want to produce something on our own not related to mm. all that you know and this is this is art. art any form of art or invention or uh, you know you could be an engineer and you want to do your your own car and then you open your own line you mm. know that could be a vision also why not mm. you know it's not only art as you know it could be anything mm. But at least it's not related to the big system, you know? You're not neither s selling the item nor making it of the factory, you know? Mm. You're only consuming it because exactly. you're gonna consume it at some point. Exactly, but they make you do it. Yeah, otherwise, you know, you are a consumer. On the other side, you have to be a creator. Mm. And this is what pushes me, you know, to do what I wanna do or what I'm doing, mm. you know? I love it. Yeah. It's amazing. I'm dead. Yeah, it gives you a meaning, like, okay, where did all my years go? You look, you say, what did I do like five years ago? Ah, oh, it's there, you know? Mm. It's there, it's there. I did this, that, this, that, you know? And yeah. then you know, you didn't waste your time being a vegetable, you know? <laughs> Producing and, you know, and consume, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> consuming, you know? And then if you're a nine to five, in some company, the effort that you put is doesn't go back to you. Mm. You know, you get peanuts, and the company makes the big profit. But you get peanuts. You know, but okay. you have no other choice because system and all this. Exactly. But there's always a choice, always. Mm. You know. But as you said, it needs courage and. Courage not and everyone vision. will be as ready to get out. Yeah, if you're ready, you're gonna go for it. Yeah. If you're not, you know, if you're not ready, no matter what anyone says or does in front of you, you're not gonna do it. Mm, you can't. Exactly. It's you know? a, it's a feeling that you get. Mm. Because what's the worst that can happen? Really, it's staying in your place. That's the worst yes. that can happen. And <laughs> fear puts you just there. Yeah. So you know. Mm. Halas, I will start painting. <laughs> really, you have to easy put your stuff, and mm. then you know, gradually you, you know, mm. you'll be inspired look at some YouTube, there's everything on YouTube, you can learn anything. Mm. Like I learned how to treat bronze and to work with bronze from YouTube. I had no idea before, you know? Yes, exactly. Anything you want, yeah. tattoos or sculpture, mm. you name it, it's mm. there, you know? How to paint a drop of water, you'll find it, mm. you know? It's mm -mm. so cool. It's everything is available now, <coughs> accessible. And instantly. You don't mm. need to wait for anyone to teach you anything. You can and for do free. it yourself and for free. You don't even need a university mm. degree anymore. Mm. Really? Yeah, yeah, everything and is no. super accessible. I never used mine. <laughs> 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 really? I, because your work, mm. you know, that's your face, you mm. know, it's your, it's your identification. Your work will introduce you. Mm. You don't need a university exactly. to introduce it's you. It's by practicing that you actually learn. Yeah. Oh, often everyone tell, says that. يعني ما حالا حدا دارس بالجامعة بيقولك أنا ما تعلمت شيء. إنه كل شيء تعلمته بالشغل وطبقته. It's different than what I learned. So it's actually practicing. تعمل على الشيء. يعني تختبره. صح. Let the other read it to. to Anna, at uni, I, you know, they opened doors for me, you know, how mm. to sculpt, how to. We had a f yeah, sculpture course. course, we had a photography course, we had a computer mm. course, Illustrator, Photoshop, and this was a great advantage. Yeah, it's a great, great space. advantage. Mm. Yeah, amazing, you know. Mm. And then if you practice and you, you, know, you stay till five in the morning on your computer, you're going to learn something. Mm. Mm. You know, and this is what I did. Exactly. You know? Okay, nice. This is how it goes, but you have to want it. Mm. You have to really, really want it, mm. you know? I really hope that uh, maybe people that are watching that were maybe skeptical about starting something new and diving into it, I really hope that thanks to your story, they will get really inspired. Hope so, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'm, I'm one of like a billion stories. Yes that you know, of people doing it themselves and it's always works mm. always if you put a hundred percent it's what you're gonna get you know thank you for this uh Hika inspiration my pleasure <laughs> so uh so Haji, uh, i don't know if you saw the other podcasts 
but we have like a small section that we want to um, to take you through that is the rapid fire questions so i'm just going to ask you very quick questions that uh, and you need to answer with the uh, first thing that uh, comes to your mind uh, it's just take it to get to know a bit your preferences okay okay cool ready deal okay ready so who is your favorite band ha ah. <laughs> You like music, so I felt it's the right question. For the longest part in my life, I loved Manowar. Okay. It was like, and Your Twisted thing. Sister, these bands, like, they gave me a lot of power. The lyrics, the music, it was the thing, you know. Okay. And Metallica, of course, but, you know, first comes Manowar. Okay. And you said for the longest time, so Baden Asar Fi Rechi. Baden Asar Fi, Dark Tranquility, I loved that band for a long, long, long time. Rammstein okay. lately, I love Rammstein. And uh, for, for now, I'm enjoying other types of music than metal, you know? Okay. Like world music mm. and psych psychedelic music. Mm. Okay, nice. And uh, l um, chill out, I mm. have some chill out, yeah. Okay, so depending on the mood. Yeah. Mm. Uh, next, uh, what's your favorite drink? <laughs> it used to be Bloody Mary, it used okay. to be. But now that I really cut down on alcohol, I love orange juice. <laughs> oh, okay, vitamin C. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, what's your uh, favorite TV show? Uh, there was, like in the 80s, there was this series called The A-Team. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire The A-Team. The A team. The A team. Okay. It's about like this uh, gang of uh, people, like five people, and they have a van and they solve problems and you know it's an action thing. Oh. So it was my favorite back then. And then when I started tattooing, really like since '95, I dropped TV and all entertainment wasn't in my. You know, ah, okay. So since then. Uh, yeah, not really. It stopped. Interested. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I love documentaries. I love. Um, mm. Usually documentaries. Mm. I love like Lord of the Rings, you know. I, I could do that. Yes, I love it. Yeah. Uh, Alan, uh, Woody Allen movies. Okay. Yeah. So, who's your favorite uh, fictional character? Fictional character is called Howard Rourke. Mm. And he's a character in a book that I've read like, I don't know how many times. And it, this book really shaped my character and my vision in life and how I did the, my, you know, how I did my choices in life. It's called the Fountainhead. Okay, why? How did it? Uh, because this guy is a rebel. So ah. the Fountainhead is about architecture. So this guy, Howard Rourke, is an architecture student in the 30s in the, in the US, in New York. Mm. And in this, in this era, the architecture style was more dominated or influenced by the Roman architecture and the Greek mm. architecture. Mm. And he came with a modern point of view. Like, why should a house uh, have 27 columns where five columns would do? Okay. Just like the human body, you don't have an extra bone that you don't need. Mm. And then he saw the circulation in the house and all that. And society opposed him because he was new. and. People don't like new things. They like to stick to, you know, the usual, exactly. the casual. Comfort. <laughs> exactly. And how he defied society and how he, he, he went to the brink of, you know, uh, starvation just to put his point, you know, to make his point. And he did not bend, you know. Wow. He did not bend. He just went against the stream. So, um, so he inspired you. Yeah, a lot. I wanted to be him, mm. you know. So when I was 20... And uh, you became him. I don't know. <laughs> maybe he was too rigid. No, sometimes I was like, no, I don't want to be him anymore. You know? <laughs> I want to be more easygoing. <laughs> okay. Cool. Nice. Uh, so I can see you have many tattoos on yourself. And you also mentioned that you started tattooing on mm -hmm. your own skin. Mm -hmm. So um, do you think you can take us through some of your tattoos? Sure. Uh, maybe your favorites, uh, maybe tell us if they have a meaning or like a story behind them which you'd like to share. This one, I did this. This was the second tattoo I did on myself. Okay, second tattoo. Yeah, this is in September 95. Oof, okay. Imagine. Wow. 
Yeah. Okay. 28 years yes. ago. <laughs> yeah, I was 20. Okay. Anyway, so this one, um, it's a tribal, because tribal style was very common back then. Mm. It's a raised flag and a sun and an octopus eye. Okay. And the octopus because, first of all, the eye because you need to see, and the octopus is because he's intelligent, you mm. know? The intelligence of the octopus is super. And then uh, everything is a race. So you have to finish your project on time at university. You have to finish your appointment on time because you have a next one coming. So everything is related to time. Mm. And when you're driving yeah. also, you know, timing is everything. If you're going between cars, yes. it's my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, everything is timing. Me too, by the way. I yeah, <laughs> it's fun. It's yes, action. it is. <laughs> and then you need the sun to see, you know, without yeah. light, you can't see anything. Yeah. And you can be very idealistic in your life, but there's always something that has to drag you down to earth. Nice. You know, so this I is how it. I meant, yeah. I, I love it. it. Okay. And then Another I have... Another favorite, maybe? Well, this arm, I got this done in London. Okay. So you have a woman holding a heart. It was a broken heart before, but mm. then I mended it. Yeah. Because I always had problems with women, you know. Oh. Love stories and all that. <laughs> you got your heart broken? Many times. Oh, no. Haven't you? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and music, so you have a guy playing the accordion, a pl guy playing the violin, fire because I'm fire, I'm Aries, I'm fire, mm. and my personality is fire, so okay. wing for freedom. These I got done in Barcelona, this one in London. Mm, it's nice, it's yeah. from different countries. Yeah, in different Ireland. Cool. Lately I got this in Mexico. Wow, Mexico so you did City. travel a lot as well? Yeah, Goa. Every year I would go like six, seven times, six, seven ah, places. Okay. You know, I love traveling. Yes, it's amazing. Honestly. Yeah, you learn a lot mm. and you grow a lot. And you discover a lot. Yeah, you discover yourself, yes. you know, because who are we? We are a column of water. That's what we are, mm. you know, like a column of water standing up. And we are subjected to many stimuli, you know, around us. News, traffic, people, ideas, whatever. So what you are is a state of reaction to whatever is coming at you. Mm. If you remove yourself from this pot and you put yourself in another surrounding where you are stimulated by different stimuli, there will be another version of you. Mm. And you can only discover that when you travel. Mm. Different language, different culture, different colors, different architecture, different way of thinking, different energetic vibe in that city, mm. you know, in the place that it's you so are. That's so true. And you sense it. You feel different. Different, and you are different. Yeah. Different reactions, you know, and then you get the distance, you know, at least to observe yourself from another point of view, mm. because now you are not subjected to the same stimuli, reacting the same way unconsciously, and therefore it's the same you. Now you are different. You are another you, yeah. criticizing or commenting or dissecting, observing, analyzing the former you in another setting. You know, mm. and if you have the awareness to do this, then travel will do you great. Mm. If you, the change will happen unconsciously also. But if you are conscious about it, it's even better. It takes it to a higher dimension. You become more of a master of yourself, you know? And this is what travel does. But if you travel, like let's say, and go to a mall. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's that the same vibe eye as going to any mall, mm. you know? The vibe yeah. in the mall is the same. Yeah, it's true. Same, same, but different. But it, you didn't do much, you mm. know? Especially if you travel with your friends. Also, your friends will trigger you in the same way that they always did, you know, the same comments, same jokes, mm. same whatever. Mm. If you go alone, that's the trick, to go alone. Mm. It's in my know? bucket list. You have to. Mm. The best trips you do are the ones when mm. you do alone. Because you get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Past, <coughs> enjoy it, yeah, you are a different person. Now you are with, with yourself. How mm. can you deal with it? Mm. You know? True. Are you friends with yourself or are you gonna, you know, cry about it? You decide. <laughs> so yeah. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. No, it's easy. Yeah. It's easier than you think. You know, it's so easy. And nowadays, you know, on your phone, on your Airbnb, you can go and check uh, different activities and True. do group activities with other people and you True. make and friends. It's even easier to, to, so exactly easy. to meet people. Yeah. Mm. If you're open to it and if it's what you mm. want, you can get it. Mm. If you want to go and be alone, you can also. You know, it's also 
a, you know, an experience. Mm. But it's also nice to interact with other people, you know, have lunch, have dinner, do activities, you know, little conversation exactly. you can. Exactly, and learn about their culture. Yeah. You know. If you speak to those people, you, you will learn a lot about the country. Yeah, yeah, about. yeah. Even foreigners in that tourists mm. like you from another, yeah, you from know, another culture, they have their stories yeah. to tell you and their, you know, yeah. uh, triggers. So cool. Mm, it is. <laughs> yeah. Great. So, um, so Haji, to wrap this up, um, I think a lot of people after watching that podcast got inspired a lot from you. And I believe that maybe if you can give one final advice to any artist, I mean, a current artist, an upcoming artist, someone maybe who is afraid to start, what would you tell them? you know, to really grow into that field and just let it go. One motto I say to myself. Okay. Always, this is like the rule. It's better to do it than not to do it. I love it. Because it, if you've done it, you've done it. At least you know what it is. Yeah. If you don't do it, you will never know. And you always question it. So as a rule, shall I do this painting or not? It's better to do it than not. Even mm. if you're going to throw it in the trash, who cares? But it's better to have done it. Mm. At least you, you know? tried. So it's better to do it than not to do it. Okay. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Nike. <you. laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Always be ready, you know, mm. because what, what does it mean to be ready? To be alert, to be mm. on guard, mm. you know? It's mm. like you have a cup of water a, uh, or a barrel of water. Wherever you pierce it, water is going mm. to flow mm. instantly. The water is not going to hesitate and think, should I flow or not? You pierce it here, it will flow here mm. instantly. Mm. So to succeed, you have to be ready because the fish will come. If you're not ready to fish it out, the opportunity is the fish. It will go away. It will go. If you're not ready on the spot to grasp mm. it, gone. Mm. You know, so you have to be ready. To be ready, you have to be mentally ready and, you know, emotionally and physically mm. and all that. So you have to maintain yourself you have to read you have to have ideas on you floating in your mind you have to have bullet points you know this is my focus i want this i'm looking for a good quality textile to paint on t-shirts for example so you're open to that mm. Mm. you go to several places you meet different people you check different material you talk to you're ready and then and then one day someone sp says oh i have this a piece of textile, my friend in another country is gonna whatever. Oh, okay, I'll buy it. You mm. know, mm. you're ready. You're yeah. f you know, you grab it. You grab it, and you do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that. Jill, so um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for having me for this amazing talk. Um, I honestly learned a lot by talking to you, and I really wish you all the best. You really are an amazing artist. Thank you. And I hope you keep inspiring people, whether your clients, when they come to you, whether anyone you, uh, you meet or discuss, because hey, you have a very rich background and it's nice to share your story. So thanks again. Thank you. And best of luck in everything you do, Hadji. Thanks. Thank you. Tracy, <laughs> it was a pleasure being with Thank you. Thank you. Really. <laughs>